What's up, Fairful? Welcome to the 49er Fairful UK Live. As always, I'm your host, Paul Hope. And the aim of this week's show was to boldly go where no live has gone before. Now, breaking YouTube wasn't in my notes. It wasn't in Lee Gowland's notes. And it wasn't in Alex Simpson's notes. But before I bring him on stage, I did have a very special introduction wrote. So today's special guest is a big part of the Let's Talk Sports universe. He is the self-appointed fact checker of our very own awesome foursome. Rumour has it he loves to make a cheeky, bold prediction or two of his own. And with that introduction, I'm delighted to finally bring on stage my good friend, Alex Simpson. Evening, Paul. I uh, My takes are that bad. I broke YouTube, I think, is, uh, is going to be... <laughs> It's going to be my banner. Even YouTube didn't want to listen to it. I mean, we said boldly go where no live has gone before. So to be fair, Alec, you like to be a trendsetter. And we've gone live <laughs> on Twitter. So apologies for all those people who may still be in YouTube. It seems to be a global outage. Um, unfortunately, it's kind of thrown us a little bit because this was a show that I was really looking forward to tonight. Now, I know who you are. I know what you do. But for those people who may not be aware of the Let's Talk Sports universe and some of the things that you do, and I did want you to give us a bit of a brief introduction to who Alex Simpson is and what Let's Talk Sports is, buddy. Uh, wow. Um, so I'm just a freesome part of the NFL around the UK. So there's me, Gary, Matty. You come on every now and then, Paul, in dust all your wisdom around us all. Um, so Let's Talk Sport was obviously settled by Dan Harris, bless his soul, um, just to create, give people like me a voice that know nothing about sports. Come on. So he did that. Um, you you gave me the bug. You said, come on uh, to the, the 49ers podcast. So he gave me the bug. And from there, Dan was like, yeah, come on, do your own show. And it just rolled from there. And then uh, I say, met Gary, Matty, doing great shows like that. And we just, we cover more of the, the global side, the, the, all of the NFL shows. Uh, and then we also have a really cool show on a, a Sunday pregame show because obviously there's no pregame show in the UK other than kind of what you see on Sky. So we have that, have a couple of fans on uh, on a Sunday. And then we've got the uh, NFL quiz coming up in a couple of weeks. So but yeah, Let's Talk Sport. If you're not already subscribed to it, subscribe to it on YouTube. Some great channels on there like F1, uh, Football, uh, ice hockey, wrestling, it kind of covers everything on there. So, Yeah, I mean, I did People Like Us last week, cheeky plug, and I got asked the Let's Talk Sports question. And for people who were part of the Let's Talk Sports universe, Dan Harris is an inspiration. As you said, God rest his soul, no longer with us. He gave me my big shot on YouTube, for want of a better word. It was a, a one-off. And then he was like, the views were quite good, Paul. Do you fancy coming back on? And like you said, um, me and you had interacted on the group, I know we were talking off air that um, while YouTube was down, and I was going to get your thoughts before we dive in at the bold predictions. But I do like what you three are doing. I did feel a bit nervous when Gary set the around the NFL up, and it was four forty nine his fans. And as I've said to people, Dan wanted me to become the best version of myself with my channel, so I have thrown my efforts in to the forty nine faithful UK, but. The live was always my baby. It was always my vision to get different people on. And like I said, I may not be a regular contributor to Let's Talk Sport at the moment, but it's something very close to me. And yeah. people like you were my friends. I love to support you. And like I said, as soon as I had the idea for the show and the thumbnail, and then that's why we, we've had to jump over to Twitter. In the top corner, it looks as if YouTube may be fixed, but tough luck, YouTube. You've lost out <laughs> now. So I think people are starting to go live. But uh, so... Let's have a little look at my notes. The main topic, there's no getting away from it, Alec, is bold predictions. Now, you'll be pleased to know I'm not going to fire 
the video. <laughs> and when I say the video, <laughs> I want you to tell people about your boldest of bold predictions, buddy. So so I'm gutted about this bold prediction. One, because of I I actually gave the bold prediction off air and the reaction off air was even worse than the reaction when I did it live to you guys. So I had a bold prediction um, around that the Kansas City Chiefs wouldn't make the playoffs at the beginning of the season. This was pre-season. I was looking at the roster. I was thinking they've got a bit of defense. They've got no wide receiver. They don't have a running game. Mahomes has to have a down year. This is has to be the year that he has a bit of a down year. Um, and I was looking good, like week five, they were really struggling. They weren't in their kind of stride. They lost to Detroit week one. I was, you know, plugging myself. I was sending my CV into NFL UK, like, come on, I'm ahead of the curve here, boys. Um, and then, yeah, I think I think they may have won the Super Bowl. <laughs> so what week did you drop that? I saw it on the show. And then our good friend, Gary who's your co-host, um, he has shared that video. I mean, he tagged me in it the other day. He was like, if you're getting him on to talk bold <laughs> predictions, Paul, you have to share this video. Now, for context, if you haven't seen the video, we will tweet the link out afterwards. But I didn't want to fire that up and uh, embarrass you, for want of a better word. But you're going to have to... I'm not embarrassed by it. I'm, I'm owning it. I am not embarrassed by it in the slightest. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Um, I am tempted to call that the 49ers won't make the playoffs this season, just to, just to ride my luck a little bit. <laughs> So, I mean, you've always been one for being bold. And obviously, I think you're aware of the conversation we're going to have. So you shot to prominence because you were an avid fan of the Awesome Foursome of the yep. podcast. We're known for our bold predictions. And people may be thinking, hang on, Paul, you've given this lad a bit of an introduction here. The self-appointed fact checker. So that is factually correct so this is where i want you to explain to people why i've coined that as your new nickname well i think he's been i think uh gareth has kind of took the lead on that on the pod he seems to be pulling you guys in pretty sharpish on a couple of your bold predictions like he stepped it up this season i didn't i didn't feel i was needed um so i think that came about and i think it was a 2019 season 2020 season and it kind of ran the jimmy g um and it was just by just going back looking at game tape and just interacting with you boys. But I think our biggest interaction came around Jimmy G when you you said that he wouldn't, he'd go, was it four games without throwing an interception? And I I had, should I thought, I, I like Jimmy G. I thought he was a good quarterback. I'm kind of in that camp of, he, I feel like he could have done enough to win as a Super Bowl. Um, yeah, and I, I just don't, don't curse it. So I, I think I called you out, Paul, and said I'd, I'd buy a Jimmy G jersey. <laughs> If he won, swiftly seen the price of Jimmy G jerseys at the hype of his 49ers. I think you can get him in a, a £10 bin now. Um, but I did donate a bobblehead, so. You did. So to be fair, you're right in what you're saying. So I've, I've called you the fact checker. So when we started doing the pods, we kind of jumped around a little bit and then we've settled on the awesome foursome. And I make no bones about it. Gareth is the horse with the most. He has the most thankless job in sports entertainment, keeping us three right. And he did kind of, we kind of were getting bolder and bolder, but I think people listening who listen to the pod would appreciate that we started to kind of look into ones like that. So it was a stat that I'd read that Jimmy hadn't gone so many games without an interception. And I was like, I'm going to drop that. And you were straight on it. I think you either, was it, it must have been on the Facebook group. I remember feeling all smug myself and then the pod dropped and then I was sat watching the TV with Tracy and Alex Simpson's tagged you in a post. And then you were like, so bold. You were like, I'm putting my money where my mouth is. I'm buying a jersey. And I was saying to Tracy, what do I do here? Because if I'm wrong <laughs> and he's right and he's bet me a jersey. So then obviously, like you said at the time, the jerseys were quite expensive. So I'm, I'm not going to lie, Alec. I was relieved <laughs> when I was right <laughs> and you were wrong. Now, to be fair, everybody, um, you did, you did reach out to me and say, "Look, the jerseys are very expensive. Can I um, do donate a bobblehead?" So fair play. Now we're going to go down that rabbit hole of the community because off air you were talking to me about the community, and it's always nice for someone like myself, who's the vice president, who's you know member of the admin team, to hear people like you say, "This is what it means to me." Because obviously, I think you started to become a bit more of a prominent member. You started commenting more on the pods. Yeah. 
you were doing more with Let's Talk Sports. And I just want you to share what you told me off air. Yeah. So kind of I'll go back a step. So I did um like join the 49ers kind of so I'm kind of like 2013, 14, and kind of like through the Kaepernick years as well on Facebook. And I, I was part of like all the groups, a few of the American groups. I, I wasn't part of the faithful group. And there was really polarizing about Kaepernick, like. I don't care. Like, I don't care what your beliefs are. If you're a good football player, I want you playing for the 49ers. Like, if Brock Purdy comes out tomorrow and says the world's flat, like, I'm like, yeah, mate, I support you. you just win me a Super Bowl. Like, <laughs> I'm kind of like that. What you what you do on, off the pitch? I'm not. Do you know what I mean in your beliefs? And I kind of fell out of love of just like the Facebook groups because they were really, really negative towards someone had said something. They'd go back, and then I found uh, the UK faithful group. Obviously, found the pod and stuff, and then joined the group. And the conversation is just completely different. So I tried to look for it today, but there was a conversation I had after the Super Bowl last, I think it was two days after the Super Bowl last, where we were talking about, did Carl mess up the coin toss? And literally it was a stream of about 80 comments, but none of them were like, oh, you know nothing, what are you talking about? It was always like, oh, my point of view is this. Oh, well, I think this, oh, but this. And it's just, you've, you, Gareth, Naji, and Lee have created a community where People are not at each other's throat about it and they're okay to disagree with each other. And I think that's like, that's so hard to create a community like that around a sport. Like you go to any other fan group, but like I've got a friend that's a Philadelphia fan. Like I rang it, they were 10 and one and like the world was falling down when I spoke to him. Like <laughs> they wanted to get rid of everyone. And I'm like, you're 10 and one. He's like, ah, oh, it's rubbish. And it just, it's just completely different in this group. So and that's like I say, fair credit to all four of you, like and all the admin team as well, like managing the behavior online. It just like people can ask questions uh, yeah. and get yeah, a proper answer. I think it's easy that with the community though, so it isn't just the admin team. I think there's twelve to fourteen of us now. And when I was doing that show last week, and I was trying to prepare and put together, you know, what is the fighting NFA for the UK to someone who maybe outside who isn't fully aware of what we do. Like you said, you've come on our channel tonight. You're trying to kind of make your own waves on Let's Talk Sports. But like you've said, there's times when you guys have gone live and I've jumped in the comments and yeah. straight away I'm supporting what you're doing. If you weren't on the show tonight, you'd have been sat at home in the comments. And I know Eric has is, is joined us. He's already sent me a lot of questions that he wants me to ask you. <laughs> so some of the stuff I'm asking you tonight is like a team effort. So obviously yeah. Eric's been my um, partner in crime. For the last great couple of shows weeks. he's put together as well. Like great, so, you two are great couple of shows. Eric will be back. Um, it's just he is part of the vision of seeing new people get an opportunity. And I know we've done stuff on Let's Talk Sports before, but and you've done the pod, but this is your first fighting NFA for the UK live experience. Mm -hmm. And because of that, everybody, I'm not going to give it away just yet, but later on, there may be a certain segment about to return. But last week, so teasing people, I've learned off Lee Gowlin there, Ali. <laughs> last week, me and Eric had a great chat about 49ers content creators, who our go-to was. And I've come up with an idea that throughout the season, I want the UK to have a bit more of a voice. So Rob Stats Guerrera and the Gold Standard Network, they do a great job. Each March, they do a 49ers yeah. media. And... I would gut it to miss out on the applications. Now, the breaking news is Rob has said that we will be in it next year. I fully expect a first round exit, but you have to be in it to win it. So I'm hoping to jump on with Rob in the next two weeks, which will be epic. But I thought it would be good for the content creators across the pond to see who we keep shouting out and who we keep watching. So I have to admit, I think I know you pretty well. But I don't know who your go-to guys are. So Eric WhatsApped me, I think it was last night. Never sleep in the fight in NFA for the UK. So we was we were swapping questions of what we could ask Alex Simpson. So putting you on the spot, buddy. I didn't send you this. Who no. are your go-to content creators at the oh, moment? Grant, Grant, Grant Cohn. Grant Cohn, hundred percent is <laughs> Wow, I did not expect that, that to be the first name out. <laughs> uh, I think for me, uh, Matt Mayeko, I think he's really good. I, I like his, I like his pod because they're quite short. They're thirty minutes. Like you can get into them, you can kind of delve in. Um, they're really good. Breezy again, I like his shows. I kind of catch his shows. Ted's really good. Uh, Larry Kruger, kind of up there. Um, 
and that's kind of I'd say they're the, the kind of ones I listen to. I like I'll jump in on Grant every now and then when I want to get myself riled up and I fancy going to the gym. Um, I'll listen to him for half an hour. Uh, but it's that's just for a balanced point of view, if I'm honest. Uh, but yeah, Matt Maik is probably my my go to um, and kind of breezy. I love breezy. I think he does a really good job um, of keeping it keeping it real um i love what ty does as well i really love ty did an interview with matt maiko just before last year's uh, did, eagles yeah. and that was a great like really really great insight um to kind of what he sees so ty's ty's one-on-one interviews are really good well it was ty alston with matt miyoko ty alston with lee gowland that i did that face to face to my yeah. bucket list so obviously I was lucky enough to meet Ty in the gold mine. But as I said to you off air, the point of the gold mine was just to enjoy the game, obviously meet up in person. I know if there's ever a Niners in London game again, Ty Olsen's coming across the pond and it's going to be awesome to party with him in the UK. But we are just trying to gather who people listen to. I must admit, if Lee was still in, he did jump in backstage, everyone, to try and fix the problems. I think he was blaming me and Alec, all jokes <laughs> aside. <That's stupid. laughs> um, but Grant Cohen isn't on my band list at the moment. He's someone I've started to watch a little bit more. Uh, I do think he's quite engaging on Twitter. He did a show with Ryan Hensley and Crystal a couple of weeks ago, and I'm a big supporter of what yeah. Crystal does. So obviously I was um, tuned in for that. Matt Miyoko. It's a strange one because when I think of content creators, I think of people like us on YouTube. But you're right. I think the balance of a podcast and a YouTube is quite good because I'm back commuting in the office. There's nothing better than I like than to put my headphones in, put a podcast on. And like you said, the Miyoko shows 25 minutes. It's normally the length of time it takes for me to get from Middlesbrough to Darlington. So yeah, it's just about amazing. right. So it, it's good to know who your go-to guys are. Uh, so the one on the w- one I will say on Grant is that um, Javi pointed this out to me. So he used to do uh, the Fourth and Goal podcast. This was like pre, you know who I'm on about, yeah. That was my just to interrupt you there. Thank you for the name. I said to Eric, Javier Vega was my first what I called proper content creator. That wasn't a Matt Miyoko, and the Fourth and Goal podcast, Alec, is where I won this bad boy. Yeah, the good good guys, good guys. And he messaged me. I remember we went back uh, like uh, on Twitter and he probably messaged me. He says, the thing you got to understand about Grant is he's creating a platform to make money. And he's just, and the 49ers are a, a really easy platform to make money from because of, there's a lot of fans. It's really easy to be polarizing for him. So once you get that in your head that he's just there to make money, he's not a fan. Like he openly admits he's not a fan. So... Uh, that's kind of how I take it now. Once I took that on board, it's a little bit easier to listen to because a lot of the stuff is just there for clicks. So um, it, it's well documented. I don't watch any of the sports. I know not everyone is obsessed as me. I was saying last week, my YouTube subscription list is a who's who of 49ers content creating. So it is something that we're going to ask a guest each week. We're going to collate a list, and I think we're, me and Eric are thinking about doing a couple of tweets, a couple of polls out there. Might do a couple of shorts. It was it was Eric's idea last week to talk like content it. creation, and I thought credit where credit's due. And then he hit me with a, a mini segment that we're going to do. So again, I've got to ask you because you won't. So on your show, there's you, Gary, and Matty. Now I always think when you do a show, four's the maximum number. I think any more than four. Yeah, yeah you're on the So I think I might know the answer to this given how you've just answered my first question. But just say next week on Around the NFL, Gary reaches out to you and he says, I've got a guest booked in. Who would be your dream guest if you could invite anybody from the community, content creating, like don't not not known from the team, but like you've mentioned a few names there, who would be the one guest that you would want on your show with the, with the boys? Uh, I suppose the easy answer is going Matt Maiko would be the easy answer just because of his span of kind of some of the stories. Like if anyone's not watched that interview with Ty, like go and watch it because some of the stuff he talks about in like Candlestick, the Joe Staley run against New Orleans and the playoff games, like it's a great interview because not many people get to interview Matt from that point of view. 
So go and watch it. Um, I'd say that. Uh, but then I would probably say actually Gareth. I would get Gareth on just to plug his brains of like how he controls you, you three in the pods <laughs> to give me some advice of when I'm on the show next. So who who runs the show of you guys? Because when I've tuned in and watched you guys, I'm trying to I'm trying to work out who's Gareth, who's Nadji, who's Lee. Who's me? And I can't quite pin down who the Gareth of the group is yet. It starts off. It starts off with Gary, and he loses control really quickly. <laughs> um, so, yeah, de- yeah, definitely, definitely, Gary. He's the one that comes with the all all the ideas. It's all set up, and then all of a sudden, it, we're talking about uh, Justin Herbert for two hours. So it sounds as if when Gareth came on the live a couple of weeks ago, so obviously trade secrets, for want of a better word. When you get a guest on, you normally send them an itinerary. So I've sent you a loose, and I use the word loose outline yeah. because I find that when you go live, it's easy to kind of go down some rabbit holes. And that's yeah. why I wanted to know who calls the shots because I'm in your group chat. Um, I've done a couple of shows, but I always wondered who had the big chair because like you said for us gareth is supposed to have the big chair but i don't envy his job at all <laughs> neither do i yeah i'd say it's gary gary's the one who like fair play to him he's the one who puts it together he's the one who puts the time in um but again you'll let us run with it like kind of the the sunday show is my idea and he's kind of ran with it and he thinks it's a great idea it's working so like yeah gary's the one that runs it but i'd, I'd say he kind of lets go after a while Matty's a bit uncontrollable. So you did surprise me. I thought you were going to say Grant Cohen purely to kind of, I think, I think Matt Miyoko would come on be quite respectful. I think Gareth would be good, but I just imagine Grant Cohen on your show, as you said, with Gary trying to keep you under control, Matty maybe going a little bit left field. And I think you might be a little bit like, all right, I can be the ultimate fact checker here with <laughs> yeah. Grant Cohen. That would be epic to be fair. I, again, I, He's not a 49ers fan, so it just doesn't... I think once I've got that in my head, it just doesn't make it... Like, it what he says is all just has no... kind. He's a journalist, so... So before we move off the ball predictions, I'm not letting you off that lightly. I do have two final questions before we move on to some draft talk. So we've, we've, we've told the people what your best known ball prediction is, because Gary shared that. But I wanted to hear you straight from the horse's mouth. I want to know what your best world prediction has been and what your worst has been, as in from your point of view, when you look back on oh, you My worst has got to be Kansas City to the to not make the playoffs. That's, that's that's There you go, Gary. You can clip that one. That, that's just for you, buddy. <laughs> that's just that was horrendous. Um, I've had some bad ones, though, Paul. So trying to pick a good one is is a struggle. I've had uh, some bad ones. <laughs> that's some bad ones. I kind of go with the strategy: if I, if I throw enough stuff, something will stick. So, um, I, I think I, I called the Bill Belichick one quite early that it was going to be his last season. I think I called that literally as the season kicked off because of what they had together, and he wasn't rebuilding. I, I called that one pretty pretty quick. Um, and I think I also. I also called the demise of the Cowboys losing to Green Bay, uh, losing to Green Bay in early in the playoffs. I called that live on the show because I just couldn't. The Green Bay are a good team; like they scare me next season. I think they're going to be up there. Well, we might get into that, dependent on which where we go next. So, I don't know about you, but we're officially in draft season right now. I know a lot of people are plugged in doing mock drafts. I'll be honest; I haven't done any until yesterday so out of the awesome foursome there's just me standing at the moment because gareth's moving house nadji's got stuff on with work and family and lee's just been away so they've kind of stepped away and we normally kind of do a lot of draft stuff we do the mock drafts online and lee always plugs the pff mock draft simulator so i went on there yesterday and it let me do one and i think i did two rounds and then it was like you've reached your daily limit if you would like to subscribe, and yeah. I looked at the cost of subscription, and I thought, Chris, you kill yeah. me. So I was like, hmm, let's have a look at some freebies. So I did yesterday start doing some mock drafts. Um, I said to you off air, yesterday was a great day for content. <laughs> Basically, Brad Graham went live, John Chapman went live, 
I think TED Talks ball went live. They were literally just one finished, another one started, and Tracy was like, any chance of you not taking those headphones? It's the off-season. Oh, yeah. It's off-season. But are you into the draft season and the mock drafts? Or is it um, something you don't do? So I'm going to be like, this is going to be a really strange, quite a strange answer to the question. So yeah, I am. I'm involved in the draft. But since Kyle and John have took over, I'm so much more relaxed with the draft process. I used to be a little bit with Trent Balky, kind of the picks coming through. I used to be a little bit like more invested in it. Um, but now I kind of like just trust Kyle and John. So I don't take that much of a like, it's like the Ayuk situation. I know we'll probably get into it. I am not worried in the slightest because of, I just trust Kyle and John, like the way they've done it with Bosa, the way they did it with Debo. I've got no reason to get all panicky. And so with the draft wise, I've looked, I think we trade out around one. I think everywhere I'm reading, like I'm reading, there's only, is a 15 to 20 round one talents. So I think we actually trade, trade back out. We need the picks because don't forget we missed out on uh was it three years worth of round one picks at you look around our team our team isn't young like you look at the kittles debo Ayuk, they're all coming out of their rookie contracts we need a bit of we youth like the d line i feel like needs a bit of youth so let's let's gather some picks in the second round third round and pick up some decent talent there yeah, it's interesting because what I was going to ask you next is when you're saying you're quite relaxed. So what position do you think that they'll prioritise heading into the draft? So everyone's going, oh, we'll go O-line. We're, we're really, I don't think we will because it's Kyle. So I don't think we will. I think we'll prioritise a good, solid running back. And I think we'll draft five D-line. I can see us going really heavy on D-line. Get that rotation back to where it needs to be. Um because uh, I that's what they're known for. So I think that's what they'll do. I think we'll go heavy D line. Uh we'll pick up a qu- couple of cornerbacks, uh running backs, and I think it'll be a really non splashy draft for the 49ers just about getting bodies in the building. Yeah, I was gonna say we could do all this talk. We could give our bold predictions, but you're right, the 49ers value defensive tackles and defensive <laughs> linemen. It's it's what they've done uh since they've took over. I'm similar to you. I'm quite relaxed. We are going to get into the IU situation. Um, the fans want an all lineman at pick 31. That's that's the noise around. I think, obviously, you look at the team last yeah. year. I don't think we had the worst offensive line in the league, but I think if any position group on our team, you could say, right, Alec, which position group are you going to improve? If you had your pick of anyone, you would pick the offensive line because, you know, your boy Juice has took a pair court. Obviously, Brock Purdy is super cheap, which allows us to keep all these studs around. I do agree with the likes of Brad Graham and John Chapman. We are in our Super Bowl window at the moment. Um, I'm relaxed about the IU situation. I'll tie that in with the draft stuff. I'm very similar to... I remember when the Debo situation was happening a couple of years ago yeah. and I was doing shows with Dan Harris. And I remember about this time, I'd done a show with Dan and we were backstage and I said to our, our buddy, you're a, you're a Jets fan what are you giving us for Debo? And he was like, Paul, honestly, you're getting nothing from us for Debo Samuel. I said, we'll give you a second. And I was like, we ain't giving Debo Samuel up for a second. I think that was when they had pick number three. Was it yeah. pick number 10? And I was like, actually, talking to someone who was a Jets fan, I came away from that with Dan, and I was like, shouting it from the rooftops. I was going on our podcast, and I was saying, Debo's going nowhere, which was music to Connor Ryan's ears, because he loves Debo Samuel. <laughs> and I think the approach you take why would we give Debo Samuel away to another team? He would instantly improve them for not a King's ransom. And, and that's the close... windows open. That's yeah. that, that's the difference between Buffalo, what they've done with Diggs, is that they know that their window's closing. They've, they've got a couple of things they need to sort out. Like our window's another two seasons wide open. I think we make those decisions next season, two seasons down the road, not this season. So... We remember, be careful what you wish for. You mentioned Belichick. I remember when he took, was it Cole Strange? He took an offensive lineman in the first <laughs> round a couple of years ago and all the Patriots fans were like, really? Now, I'm not the world's biggest college football fan. I get my knowledge from Larry Kruger, Brad Graham, John Chapman. So like I said, I've, I've kind of reached that stage in April where it is about the draft season. Now, I don't need to watch college football. I can just go and watch them guys talk about it. Yeah. Now, 
before I mention names, is college football something that you're big into? I know Gary is, but I didn't know no. I was that you were big into. No, like I watch a bit, like I follow Michigan, Jim Harbaugh, kind of, that's kind of fan. But in terms of player to player details, like I have no more time in my day <laughs> to with two little ones running around to kind of like look at college football. I think the missus would uh, ban me to a small room somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> so it's a, I hear you. it's a no. Uh, but yeah, again, like I'll, I'll look through, like, like same as you, listen to a couple of podcasts, look at the, the PFF top rated. Um, but again, the draft is such a hit and miss. Like you look at, they'll go, we missed out with Trey. But then you're like, well, how do you explain Fred Warner in round five? How do you explain Kittle? Like, how do you, you just, and then we hit with Bosa. So the, the draft's just one of those of like, you're never going to get it right. Yeah. So to our approach for people watching, I am the Zim you Tracy would kill me. College football is on on a Saturday in the UK. One thing that I like about not being emotionally invested in college is I see Nadji and Lee. Lee's a Stanford fan. Nadji's an Oregon Ducks fan. And they have loads of banter, Alec, about like Stanford, Oregon. When we went out to the gold mine last year, Nadji didn't come to the Stanford game for obvious reasons. He was in a sports bar in San Francisco. And when Stanford scored, Lee got me to record a video of Lee basically <laughs> to Nadji. And I was like, yeah. it was kind of that football tribalism. And when yeah. we were in the stands, obviously it was Stanford versus Cal Bears, massive rivalry. And we, we go and get to our seat. And these Cal Bear fans were like, who do you support? I was like, the 49ers. <laughs> they were like, no, no, come on. Who are you here you're supporting? Because obviously Lee, Eric, Wayne, Stanford, Gareth, they were like Stanford. And I was like, look, lads, this is my first live game i want to enjoy it so for me whenever stanford were on attack i could high five the stanford fans whenever <laughs> cal were on the attack i could high five the, the, the cal fans and, and they really took to that and when i've come away i can go and watch a college football game and i can watch it without the emotions yeah, and i'm not criticizing anyone for like you've you've mentioned michigan now i kept an eye in michigan because of jim harbour wayne yeah. breezy is a michigan fan john v who's one of my favorite content creators he's a Ohio State Buckeyes fan. And I do see some of the battles on Twitter on a Saturday. So normally they're on the same team, 49ers fans, and then they're all arguing over college football. But um, so with regards to your homework, do you have any draft crushes at the moment? I, is it a bit early for you to be being It's bored? a bit early for me, to be fair. I'm kind of like looking at it. There's a couple of O linemen that keep popping up. Um, I think there was a center that was on a Chapman show and Kruger's show that they were kind of highlighting. Uh, so I think that that That'll again, be Zach Fraser, West Virginia, that's it. Zach Fra yeah, yeah, Zach. I didn't know that. Yeah, so I'm kind of lo looking at that. He looked really good on tape. But I'm like, is that a first round? Is that a first round body? And because we're picking so late, you, I'm. I want bodies. That's what I want out of the draft. So I'm looking kind of. Uh, I know there's loads of value in kind of third, fourth round running backs. Um, I'd love to get uh, McCaffrey's brother on board i've watched like a bit of his tape on youtube he, that looks right at what we want in terms of speed uh but then i look at kyle and like development in that area with rookies is is slow <laughs> so when you say you want bodies from the draft there's a there's an argument do you use all your picks and get as you said bodies to come into camp or do you look for immediate plug-in starters so that guy there zach fraser by all accounts the Larry Krugers of the world are saying that he is a plug-in starter. He's good to go. But could you see the fan base melting down if we pick a centre at pick 31 and it doesn't yeah. quite pan out and the guy who was at pick 32 or the top of the second round goes and become another Debo Samuel? Because like you said, Jason Ponte says it better than me. The, the draft's a crapshoot, basically. Yeah. You said, you know, we got Brock Purdy with the last pick of the draft. We gave up three firsts for Trey Lance, which my none nine his friends love to remind me about but i just wondered if there was any on your list because at the moment i'm I'm slowly compiling mine it's it's not the greatest and in depth i did i did like to see larry and brad graham yesterday arguing over jordan morgan who was an offensive tackle who might yes. pick 31 and what was quite interesting was uh larry kruger was concerned about jordan's arm size which again 
I had this on loudspeaker while I was cooking tea. I think Tracy thought I was mad watching two guys <laughs> on YouTube arguing about another man's arm size. And Brad Graham was saying that. What you need to remember is if you go and watch the, the college tape, Leto is apparently yeah, the, the top edge prospect, but apparently Morgan played really well against him. And Brad was talking about the intricacies of, you know, your offensive linemen need to have good chop motion and they need to have the physical traits. And he was like, eh, half an inch off his arm. I'm not worried about that. Now, if Brad Graham is giving him his seal of approval, Alec, that is good enough kind for of, me. I, I kind of seen that. That's the that's the one where they're kind of looking like oh, we could trade, we could trade up with the dolphins and kind of be pinching kind of that level. And I'm kind of like, I think we've been burnt by that. I think John and Kyle have been burnt by that. Just the pressure that comes with that. You imagine doing that, especially for a young O line. You're going to do that. The pressure that's done that. It's not worth it. I, I, I think we our O line. I've, I've not got an issue with. To be fair, like yeah, more experience is probably needed, but that comes with game. Keeping Fluisiani on for another season's great. Uh, you got Trent Williams in there. Like that's it's not a bad O line. Like we don't forget, we were what a play away from beating the next dynasty like let's let's put it right like the chiefs are a dynasty like and they're in the middle of their dynasty Mahomes has just took another restructure to to add more weapons and they're building so like we were one play away yeah, and we think- rolled through the, the the season really we did, yeah. I said it when we did our end of season uh, review. It was an amazing season, and I'm back at that stage where I'm going back and watching my favourite games now. You know, the lads like to poke fun at my pronunciation. You know, Northern English, not great foreign names. There's a lad at BYU. His first name is Kingsley. I cannot even begin to pronounce his surname. And just for that reason alone, Alec, I hope he doesn't become a great NFL player. <laughs> and I hope we don't trade for him because I'm going to have to refer to him as Kingsley for the rest of his career. I couldn't even spell his name. But I'm at that stage now where I'm I'm, I'm starting to do my homework a bit more. I'm starting to watch the videos. Now, I was going to finish off the, the draft talk and ask you to be bold. And I've debated about this because you said you're not a massive college football fan, but I think you've got an answer. So, because you're known for being bold and you're not frightened to give an no, opinion. No, definitely not frightened. I want you to give us a name of someone from the draft that Alex Simpson guarantees the 49ers are drafting. Doesn't, I don't care what round. I don't care whether they're an undrafted free agent. I just want you to tell everybody watching, right, John and Kyle are watching. They know what my record's like. Alex Simpson says this guy's playing for the 49ers. Luke McCaffrey. That's yeah, I, thought... I think that out of the three, because you got Jerry Rice's lads in there as well. Um, I, I just think Kyle's in love with the McCaffrey family. We know the kind of links in between there. We know how Kyle's so loyal. I mean, yeah, I'm booked that in now. I think. See, I thought you might have gone I, when you mentioned McCaffrey and you got a bit starry eyed. Um, I love his name, and I, yeah, I'm just going to say. Kool Aid McKinstry as a cornerback. I just think having <laughs> Kool Aid on our team would be epic. I don't think we'd take a cornerback at pick 31. That's who I've dabbled with when I've been doing my mock drafts. But yeah. I wasn't sure whether you were going to go with another legacy player with uh, Rice Jr. or Gar Jr. But you yeah. think McCaffrey could be one the team really yeah. interested in? The Gore one's interesting. I've watched a bit of tape, but he looks good. I've, I mean, I've seen him coming out of his kind of uh, schools because just with following Frank and Frank was constantly retweeting his stuff. And I think that could happen, but I think he's going to be lower down. So I think, again, he'll get picked up in free agency and it'll be up to him where he goes. I think that's our best chance of getting him as well as in free agency. I just think Luke McCaffrey, I think that's an easy fourth round pick or compensatory pick that we've got in the third. Like I can see that happen. That's because that's where he's going to fit in the third, fourth. Yeah. We don't need a need. So uh, yeah, that's, that's not very bold. Sorry. I apologize. It is bold because we normally take a running back in the third round. So that 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 is bold, Alec. You know. Um, so I was going to say I wanted a bold prediction from you. So I think we get Frank. Gore. I've got another one as well. Oh, another well, boldy. But it's well, an in-season think, boldy. Ah, uh, well, I think we get Gar Junior as an undrafted free agent because I think he has looked good. But if you look at his size compared to other backs, I think you could see him 
It's a bit like we were joking off air. Someone in the group watched Draft Day, and obviously the, the premise of the movie is Paul Callahan's going to be the great quarterback, and he starts sliding down the board. I think that could happen with Gore Jr. I think if the Niners don't take him the first opportunity they get, other teams might think, oh, Why and we might get him as an undrafted free agent. But you've wet my whistle now. I want to know what this bold prediction is. So I was looking around when we said bold and all this. Like I was looking around, at where, where can we go? What do the 49ers do? Because my bold predictions, they have a link. There's a, there's a, there's a region or I can see there's, a, there's an idea behind it. So kind of look, we really do like making a mid-season uh, now. I think we're known for making a mid-season splash. Like we're, we're in the teams that do it. They're going, yeah, we're in. We'll put our picks in. We'll go for it. I think that this season, and I was looking at the players coming up to free agency, and I was looking at the players that are available. I think we bring back DeForest Buckner. He's on right. his last year of his contract. He'll have 20 million in cap this season. And I reckon we'll do some fudgery round with some numbers and we'll get him back. We'll bring him back and we'll waste a third round pick on him because he's not going to, he's going to be 31 next season. The Colts aren't going to probably waste another season on him. That's interesting what they're going to do because the Texans are going to own that division. The Jags are going to own that division. What are the Colts going to do? Are they in rebuild? Does he fit the mould of what they want to do there? And I think well, he comes back to finish unfinished business. Well, you've transitioned nicely because we before we circle to Ayuk and the other segment of the show that I'm going to get to, I think a lot of people are overlooking Armstead's departure. Now, I believe the team were right to offer him a deal that they yeah. feel was worth what they feel. Obviously, Amstead's decided to go public and he's he's felt aggrieved. And I always love listening to players. I'm a big fan of the ones that do do podcasts. But I think how big of a need do you think defensive tackle is following Armstead's departure? And that was going to be one of my questions. And you've just come straight off and gone, <laughs> yeah, DeForest Buckner. It's not a bad way to plug that gap, is it, buddy? It's not. Um, I think it's massive. I like the re I like that we've got rid of Armstead. Like I, I love him. I think he's a great servant. But he's just had his meniscus repaired. He's not the weight he's at. He's not going to be ready for week one. Like it, I just had my meniscus repaired, and I don't weigh half the amount he weighs. And he's gonna he like it's painful, and it's not something that's guaranteed to be repaired because it, it just doesn't it doesn't regenerate itself. Um, so I think it's a good decision. I think he only plays half a season and we haven't got that at the moment with the way the contracts are. We're paying our youth. We can't afford to have a defensive lineman only playing 10 games a season. Yeah. I the one I am should... surprised at is Kinlaw is that we didn't... Okay, we, we upset him because we didn't offer his fifth-year option, but I don't know whether we offered him any money or anything. I don't know, actually. I don't I, I don't think we did, but it goes back to what you said earlier. And I think this is where... I... I'm quite relaxed as a Niners fan. I trust in the process. I remember what it was like before John and Kyle came. <laughs> and, and like you said, I mean, sometimes it has its advantages of being in the UK and we've not got wall-to-wall -wall coverage. I yeah. know we have to go and look for our stuff. But sometimes you think, I'm not worried. So that transitions us into the Ayuk situation. Now, you've kind of given away a little bit of your thoughts. Like you don't think there's anything to worry about. For what it's worth, buddy, I'm on the same page, but I'll let you go a little bit further before I give my take. Um, yeah, I think the Stefan Diggs thing killed it. I wouldn't surprise me if the Texans rang up, offered what they offered Diggs, and we went, no, we're not interested. So, yeah, I guess I think we'll get something done. I don't think he'll play on his fifth year option because I, I just don't think he's the type of player that will do that. Like, all, all for Lem get his money. Like, he deserves Would you want him to play on the fifth year option, though, as a fan? Nah. No, I wouldn't want him to play on that. He's, he's not going to be invested, is he? He's just going to no. be like, it, it becomes Jerry Maguire, Rod yeah. Tidwell. Show me the money, play for me. And I, yeah. I, I'm laughing because it's one of my favourite movies, but that would be my worry going into the season with Ayuk on his fifth year. From a team point of view, getting Ayuk for $14 million, pretty sweet. But I think he wants a long-term deal. So do you, where do you stand on... I don't think anything happens this side of the draft are you on the same I think the 49ers wait because let's be let's be honest as well Carl and John are business like they're business first like if they want to trade are you so say we're day one of the draft and do you know what I mean kind of the Jags are ringing up going we'll give you 
three first uh, three, 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 three first round picks for the next three seasons. Like I think Kyle and John go, oh yeah, it's worth listening to. So I think they're purposely holding off, not doing anything, just because of who knows what. You know, I mean, if you can get X amount for him, let's do it. Um, but yeah, I, I, again, I think we hover around the 25 million, 20, I think 27 million a year he'll get that we can yeah. probably make work for a couple of seasons before we have to shift some money around. I mean, Brock Purdy doesn't count against the top 53 on the cap. Obviously, I know he needs to be paid soon. Um, the Armstead savings come in post-June. And the Niners are known for doing it training camp. They've done it with yeah. Bosa, they've done it with Warner, they've done it with Kittle. So I'm not overly worried. I may have some false confidence because of what we've seen before. Um, Ayuk is one of my favourite players, um, not just because I've got his jersey. I fell in love with him when Trey was installed as QB1 and he was doing all that off-season work with Trey and I was seeing yeah. the footage. And then because me and you have talked flag football when I got into it this time last year, I went and watched Ayuk running routes and I was like, wow. Like, you know, I'm not comparing myself to an NFL <laughs> wide receiver, but you know yourself when you're starting to get into the games, you've talked about before, you know, when you were playing flag football, slant was your kind of go-to. Yeah. When you watch Ayuk run a route and that's kind of when you watch the Super Bowl back without emotion and you know the result and you see him wide open or you see him wide open in the end zone and you're like, but Ty Alston has come to the rescue there. So Brock doesn't get paid until 2026. Yeah. So we've got two more seasons to play with the money. So thanks for that, Ty. I think it's because I'd heard someone ask Chapman if we could give Brock an extension now, would we? And I think John said we're not e able to entertain that. I think it was until the end. Or there was some kind of... Hang on, what you took on that here? Sorry. Yeah, sorry. I know that's really annoying. I apologise. It's all right. It's only <laughs> because... <laughs> I was Lord. I was on the uh, well, Ty. I, I've been known for saying worse things. So I was going to ask your thoughts on the new signings. I don't know. You know, we signed tight end uh, Eric Sarbert for one year deal. Running back Patrick Taylor, one year deal. I think they're just camp bodies at this stage. But do you think there's something more to this? No, I think yeah, the worrying bit is we were looking at tight ends quite deeply and you're kind of like, we spent a few picks on tight ends and do you know what I mean, we've, we've let a few walk out of the building that we probably could have kept on a cheaper contract. Um, but then you're up against Kittle, so you're kind of judging your work at, you're always going to be at level B and C when you're judging your work up against A+. plus. So that's yeah. a bit difficult. Um, yeah, wait and see. I still think there's a, a lot more move, movement. I think we, my aim this season is to get younger We've still got the Super Bowl window, like Ty says. We've still got a core of players. We need to get younger, ready for our next push in. And that's kind of like what the, the good teams do, what the Chiefs have done, uh, what New England used to do. The Seahawks used to be really good at it, getting young bodies in. Um, and it kind of changed when the Seahawks stopped doing that. You've seen how quickly they aged. So, um, yeah, I, I'm keen on picking up draft, free agencies. Let's get, let's get some nuggets in kind of four, fifth, sixth round. Well, I said a couple of weeks ago, I think we're about 20 players off the magic 90 man that you need for training yeah. camp. You mentioned the Packers. They've got young. They've got dangerous at certain positions. The Lions have got younger and hungry. And that's one of the beauties of this wonderful sport of NFL. You can't just throw unlimited amounts of money. There's the salary cap. I think all Niners fans are aware our windows ever close. And now we have reached that time of the show. Alex Simpson. <laughs> so, would you rather people want him often Im imitated but never duplicated? That's right, people. I've brought it back. Everyone's favourite segment is back where it belongs on the 49er Faithful UK Live. I've seen a few other shows run with this idea and I thought, I promised the people bold on this show. <laughs> now, we know... All about your rather bold prediction last year with the Chiefs not making the playoffs. And I thought to myself, we've got the self-appointed fact checker on this week. I cannot pass up this opportunity. So, Alec, your would you rather is simply this, buddy. Would you rather the bold prediction you made last year came true, but your good friend Gary instead makes a rather ridiculous bold prediction that goes viral, but your reputation remained boldly intact. Or instead, would you rather that my bold prediction 
about a certain quarterback who used to wear number 10, which I may add was correct at the time, but <laughs> called into question by a certain someone, which would mean I was wrong. But your reputation as a self-appointed fact checker remained in check. Which one's it going to be and why? That's a good one, Paul. I like that. Uh, I'd probably go with uh, my reputation in tatters and Gary comes off with a viral video. Um, I think I'd, I'd go with that one. My, I mean, I stand by my Kansas City Chiefs bold prediction. It was, it, it was, a, it was good at the time. <laughs> So for context, I came home from work very excited that I'd came up with this earlier. So I'd text Gary this afternoon and I'd said, I'm thinking about bringing Would You Rather Back Gary. Now, I had the first bit, but I didn't know about the second bit. Now, if I'm honest, I thought you were going to go for me being wrong and you were going to throw me under the bus. I didn't think you were going to throw Gary under the bus. But hey-ho, but when I read that one to Tracy earlier, she was just like, I have no idea whether it's good or not. <laughs> but you'll have to let me know after the show. So uh, thank Gary's good for a viral video, so I like him. I've got something for you as well, Paul. I wanted to prepare something for you. So I, I, I feel that you you ask all the fans all the questions. So I've got some quick round questions for you, Paul. These are really, really easy, but it'd be good to like just know your answers. I know we weren't on YouTube, but join in the comments if you can. So just the first ones that comes into your head. So next 49ers jersey. Debo Samuel. Uh, if you could hire someone to run the UK faithful, who would it be? To run Ty Alston. Ooh. Uh, 6 p.m., 9 p.m. or 1 a.m. kickoff? I like the 9 p.m. Uh, offensive coordinator or defensive coordinator? Offensive coordinator. Uh, Favourite 49ers season so far? Last year. And I can explain if you need me to. Yeah, we'll come back to that if you want. That'd be interesting. Uh, second NFL team last season. Like everyone's got one. Second NFL team. Oh, that's a good one. It's just, I will quick fire in the spirit of the game, the Dolphins, yeah. because my good friend Andy Davies is a Dolphins fan. Yeah, and I did I like a lot it. of pods with him last year. And then if it wasn't them, it'd be the Lions for Andy Norton and the guy who runs the other channel, Asleep at the yeah, Wheel. Asleep, or yeah, yeah, sleep, yeah, sleep at work. Like it. Uh, mine was the Texans. Uh, Favourite 49ers purchase? Favourite 49ers purchase. I'll say the Shanna hoodie that I had on last week on the People Like Us. I, I really like that one. That's and the hat one. that I was wearing. Uh, red home or away white? See, red home. If you'd said white 90 thought throwback, that would have been difficult because that is my favourite jersey. But if it's a standard road white and the red, I go for the red. Uh Game-winning interception or game-winning field goal? Game-winning interception. Yeah. And then the last one. So I picked this one from your show last week. Uh, who's nicer, Joe Staley or Joe Staley's wife? <laughs> that is it. That is a great question. Do you know what? They were just both such lovely people for different reasons. <laughs> and seeing them together, I must admit, when I came home and I was explaining to Tracy how it happened, she was like gutted that, she couldn't come because the girls we needed babysitting because yeah. she does miss out on some of these. But uh, for I'll say Joe Staley, just because <laughs> I know he watches and I want another bear <laughs> hug off that man. Appreciate that one, Paul. Thank you. No, no, you're welcome. I, this is another reason why I wanted to bring the Would You Rather back this week for you because I know you're a good sport, I know you'd play along, and yeah, I hadn't told Alec that we were play we were doing Would You Rather until about 10 minutes when we were sat in the backstage waiting for YouTube. I was like, by the way, buddy, I've got something for you. And then he was like, I've got something for you too. <laughs> but uh, I'll tell you what question threw me the most, the one which when I put Ty said, put me in when you said, who would I employ to run the group? Because it's not something to think about because Lee Gowland does such a good job. Yeah, yeah. And then the admin team around Lee. Um, but if we had to bring an outsider in, Ty olson has got some fire merchandise. He's very technical and he's got the connections. So he's ready. He's ready. He's in. He's in. So before we finish off, I have a few things that I need to put out there. But obviously, as you are our guest, we've mentioned the Let's Talk Sport universe. We've mentioned the show that you guys do. Please tell the people at home where they can find you guys. Um, 
I don't think you have a set date at the moment, do you? Or is that? No, we kind of we're fully on off season mode. So um, I think uh, Gary's on the sunbed somewhere, chilling out, coming up with some resting up for the season. The same with Matty. So there is a show coming up. We've got a big NFL quiz. Uh, best thing to do is just follow us on NFL around the UK uh, on Twitter. Uh, keep in touch. Yeah, just from there, really. Again, we we do it. We don't do it for the the likes or the subscriptions or anything like that. We do it because of we're free people that just like chatting football. Um, we're really keen to, I, again, I need to get to a meetup. The, all, the meetups have just been, for me, have just been between either having my knee operated on or little one being born. So um, it's on the bucket list this year yeah. to get well, to a meetup. You asked me what my favourite season was, and it was last year for that reason. We had the London meetup with Joe Sterling. Obviously, I had the gold mine meet up in San Francisco where I got to meet like Zatai, Chapman, Ted Talks Ball. And I had quite a few mini meets, you know, obviously going up to the candlestick in Brett Sinclair is always a blast. And the, the fact the community, I think the community last year, it shows the magnitude when I'm getting invited onto a podcast that's not football related and it's to talk about our community. Yeah. If you haven't watched people like us, Cheeky good watch. Club, it is a long show because I like to talk, but so does the horse Dan. But um, I really enjoyed doing that. It was interesting to kind of put some stuff out there that people might not have known about me. So that was the first item that I wanted to promote. The awesome foursome will not be back for a couple of weeks. I've had that confirmed, but we are hoping to put something together in the week running up to the draft. We like to do a live mock draft. We hit right with a few of our picks last year, Alec. J.R. Brown, Jake Moody. Some Jake Moody was the big one. one. Out there. Jake Moody was the big one. The best bit to promote is next week. Hopefully, we'll be back on YouTube. Twitter has been a bit of an experience, but I've got Crystal Sakar joining me next week. Topic yet Fire. to be decided. Neil Graham is joining me on the 24th. And as you can appreciate, that's going to be very heavy on draft. Wayne Humphreys is the man with the Photoshop and the fire thumbnail. So I text him an idea, Alec. He puts it together. So I, I didn't shout him out last week. So I wanted to show him the love. I cannot do Photoshop. I tried and it looked like a five-year-old. And then when he sent me the Thanos thumbnail and then he sent me the Star Trek thumbnail, I was like, wow. Andy Davies, who is my friend who supports the Dolphins, who is on Across the Pod. He is going to join us for a special one-off episode. We're just trying to tie in a date. This pesky Premier League, Alec, keeps getting in the way. Because I thought I had him nailed down to a date. And he was like, oh, Liverpool are playing that night. Or I've got another pod. But there is no such thing as the off-season when you're Paul Hope and you're on the 49 FA for UK. Ty Alston has had great guests lined up. I have had an absolute blast with you joining me this week, Alec. No, I appreciate it. Anytime. It's nice just to break YouTube. Yeah. Well... <laughs> To be fair, buddy, you've got a reputation. And I was like, wow. So for those people who did find us on Twitter, it's appreciated. I'm hoping to be able to put the video up on YouTube. So similar to you, we're not doing this for likes, subscriptions, comments, but they are nice to get. And we yeah. would like to get more of them. Um, I am supporting what you guys do. If anybody needs to know where to find Alec, Matty or Gary, hit me up on Twitter. I'll point you in the right direction because... You need to follow them on Twitter. The social media is pretty funny. Alex normally quite quick with the gifts. <laughs> Gary is, as you said, when the NFL season kicks in and he's put down Formula One, he's put down Liverpool, he tends to be a good laugh. Yeah. But all that is left for me to say is we will be back next week, hopefully on YouTube. I am Paul Hope. This is Alex Simpson. Thank you for watching. And go Niners. Go Niners. We love the San Francisco 49ers deep in the heart. Like Joe Montana in the corner, deep heart. Garrison hurt.